Everybody and welcome to the Tarda Zone. This is the Tarda Zone Talks. Uh, William Russell breaks the world record for the longest gap for a companion, and uh, we will read the Guinness. Uh, we've got the official Guinness Book of Records uh, page uh, up, so um, this will be in the link description. Uh, so uh, if you want to check it out for yourself, uh, please do. But rightly so, a lot of fans have been calling for this to be confirmed, and it has. And I think that's absolutely uh, fantastic. Also, uh, BBC have released a new image of David Tennant in his costume on that clip. We will take a quick look at that as well. As for Doctor Who news, it's uh, I've just checked the media there. There's not much going on right now at the moment, but I'm pretty sure... Uh, over the next couple of days and weeks, uh, it'll start to pick up. But let's uh, get straight into this and share this article, which is all there now. So hopefully it's 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 going to share there. Do, 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 do. There we go. We have a big page in there. So we'll just, there we go. So, no, it's the wrong so let's uh, get into this here. Uh, oh, oh, don't mess that up. No, 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 there we go. Right. So there you go. There's a couple of pictures there. So uh, whether you're a lifelong fan of the sci-fi, the sci-fi BBC series Doctor Who, or you joined in with more recent Doctors, you might remember Ian Chesterton. A science teacher and companion of the first talk Doctor, played by William Hartnell, as we know. Chesterton was part of the original cast and appeared for a total of 77 episodes. Uh, it's with this role that the British actor, William Russell, not only made uh, sci-fi TV history, but also broke a Guinness World, World Records title with his reappearance in the latest series. The time between the first and the last appearance of, of Chesterton uh, marks the longest gap between TV appearances, an incredible 57 years and 120 days. Um, the science fiction television show has been broadcast by the BBC since 1963. Uh, it was then that Russell first appeared in the drama show. He participated in every uh, in the very first pilot shot for the franchise, which went unaired. Uh, the episode was, however eventually reshot as we all watched the other day uh, and broadcast with the title An Unearthly Child, birthing one of the most iconic and beloved titles in TV history. I mean, this is brilliant. This is well-deserved. You know, it would have been a shame uh, if he hadn't got the world record, but it's well-deserved. Uh, after the first appearance of Ian Chesterton, uh, Russell remained a regular character in the show for the next two years until his character's departure in 1965. And that was the last time he was seen. Russell, uh, Russell's most recent and record-breaking appearance on Doctor Who's screen happened with The Power of the Doctor, which aired on the 23rd of October. Just give me a, a second there. Ted's trying to get up on his chair and he's getting annoying. So just hang on. Come here, buddy. There you go. There you go. On your chair. On your chair. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. Anyway. Um, 
the power of the doctors the third and final special aired for the centenary celebrations for the bbc there is a, a photograph from the bbc archive there of william russell uh caroline ford and co they're absolutely fantastic uh however through the years russell has maintained his association with doctor who cross platforms and media when he wasn't playing Chesterton in front of the camera, the actor took part in several DVD audio commentaries and also narrated several audio books from the series. <coughs> he also made a cameo as another character, a BBC commissioner in the 2013 Doctor Who documentary. Um, the programme recounted the making of the, the, the iconic sci-fi series and was broadcast as part of the celebrations for the 50th uh it was a long uh, 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 a long run in love uh the two between russell and doctor who series and a love that is now crowned with a record and the actor returned onto the set of the show at the age of 97 for his the power of the doctor cameo the episode aired 57 years after the character's last television appearance and it's an incredible accomplishment uh, not surprise shows uh, uh, fictionados and TV culture uh, connoisseurs what you what are you even trying to be fancy for as the science fiction television show has been broadcast by the BBC since 1963 and they just go on there which is can have a look at the whole article there obviously there's the there's the photograph absolutely fantastic to see him return uh it was that that was that for me the cameos were absolutely brilliant um i have to say it was very uh the one thing that i'll give chibs credit for they weren't done cheaply uh they were done very well so yeah, there you go, record breaker William Russell, and well, well deserved, I have to say. As I said, the whole article uh, from the Guinness uh, World Records, I will put in the link description. If you want to read the rest of the article for yourself, please do. And uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. So let's get on to our next bit of news uh just yeah let's get on to our next bit of news which is bbc have obviously uh they've released another image of uh david tennant's 14th uh doctor and uh we're about to show you that image uh now and as you can see it's an absolutely stunning uh photograph there um and you can see his costume a little bit better there uh, I'm loving the jacket, have to say. I, I think the costume looks amazing. And I, look, I've never had a problem with the outside of the TARDIS, but that shot is absolutely brilliant, I have to say. The outside of the TARDIS, I think, is the one thing that Chris, Chib Chris Chibnall and his team actually did very well. But I do like that. But um, So, yeah, uh, they've released... So they did release this... And obviously, uh, there's a regeneration set as well, which are, which we showed you on, on, on one of the last streams uh, that they released as well. So nothing major was released, uh, obviously, but we did get this new image, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And again, the article for this uh, will be in the link uh, description. Um so the post by uh, the Twitter account was uh, a new life with an all face. Is there more to the doctor's latest regeneration than we know? And then, of course, they obviously will speculate as they always uh, do. And, uh, of course, that's an image that we've already seen there. But, again, this uh, article will be in the link description. And there they actually talk about the... The regeneration set. So to mark the doctors, uh, the BBC, they, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they've, been, they've released uh, those dolls. Whether they'll do well or not is, is the comments that I've seen mostly is is that people are like, 
well, I'd like to get the David Tennant uh, doll. Um, but some are hesitant because I don't, I still don't think that character options and all of these other licensees understand. Uh, nobody likes Whitaker's Doctor, no matter what people say. It's not going to sell. You know, it's just not going to sell. You should have, what you should have done was you should have actually separated the dolls. Right? Sell the tenant one with his new costume and sell the Jody Whitaker one separately. Putting the two of them in a box set together, you know, it, it that's going to dissuade some people not to buy it. We've seen it throughout this, this whole five years. So, again, that article will be in the link description there if you just want to uh, check it out. But, you know, a lot of people are not happy with the the, the, the mouldings either. Uh, they, they've been saying it's a repaint job and all of that. I wouldn't know, you know, I get very few uh, figures. I do have a, a, a couple of figures there, David Tennant one as well, which looks brilliant. I have to be honest, it's it looks like them and all. Um, but yeah, they they look again. I've, I've see I see that social media accounts as well are finding it hard to let go of the previous era. And I know some people have argued, well, it's just over kind of thing, so they're going to talk about it for a while, which is fair enough. But they they need to be separating the merch here, right? You've already seen the Doctor Who magazine fly off the shelf, and I'm still waiting on my copy, and I'm getting annoyed because apparently. Uh, the Who shop is to send an email to say it's being shipped and we haven't received that email yet. So I don't know what's going on with them, but I want me bleeding copy of me Doctor Who magazine. So if anybody from the Who shop is listening, what's the bloody story? Right? Still waiting on me magazine. Anyway, though, as I said, they have to be very careful here because fans, they, they, I don't think they realise the fans are very bitter about the last era, and if you try to somehow somehow rope in David Tennant's doctor to try get the Jody Whitaker thing to sell, it's it's you know, don't be doing that, don't be doing that because you know fans have had enough. Separate the two dolls. Uh, I think it's, I think it was a bad idea, uh, to be quite honest. Um, uh, there was a couple of things on Big Finish. Uh, announced as well uh, some audios um, which they're releasing. They're releasing a Torchwood one, but without the Torchwood team, apparently, I've seen from the John Barrowman fans, uh, they've been giving out about that. And rightly so. You know, they, they, they have a John Barrowman story in the wings that they, they shelved, and in fairness, it should be released. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous now at this stage. Just release the bloody thing. I mean, you will make money off it. You know, so yeah, that's where I am on that one. Um, they should release them. You know, it's all about making money. You know, and fans are telling you that if you release the John Barrowman audio, they will buy it. So I don't, I don't. You know, it's like as if all these companies don't want to make money anymore. You know, don't listen. They don't listen to fans. This is the one thing we've we've learned from Hollywood and stuff like that. They don't listen to fans, and they should be listening to fans. And and, and I know some people out there, and journalists will say, well, fans don't have a divine right in this, that, and the other. But hang on. The people that you're bashing in is our articles. Without those people, you just wouldn't be, you just wouldn't have a career, basically, in the industry uh, doing reviews, right, without fans like that. So enough. I mean, I seen a comment just before we wrap up. I've been seeing these comments lately from these radical left people. I've been watching Andor, but I can't help but think how many right wing people watch this show. Well, why does it bother you? Is that did it ever occur that you're the problem? Right? Because you're the one that has a problem with people having different opinions. So as soon as you have a different opinion to you, they're just labelled right wing. Right? Now, if you can't watch a show without having a mom because certain people of a certain political uh, belief are watching the show, well, then you're the problem. You're the problem, not them. You're the problem. Because you're the one that's making a problem and you're the one that doesn't like 
people having different opinions. So I'm sick of the media, sick of these assholes with blue check marks now, thinking that, you know, you know, all of this rubbish. Look at this, and if someone's political beliefs, right? Uh, if you're judging someone on their political beliefs, then you're you're scum. Right, you know, simple as that. Not, not gonna, I'm not gonna fucking, I'm not gonna skirt around this anymore. You're scum, right? Okay, we're not living, we're not living in the 1930s and the 1940s here, right? We're living in 2022, yeah. And we've come to a point in society where I think we're at a point where everybody has the right to have an opinion. Now, hate speech and all of that, we're all against that. Of course, we are, right? But if someone's just given a an opinion about a TV show, right? But because they're from a certain political background, they're being judged. No, that's scum. You never judge a book by its cover. Right, I'm seeing all of these. Oh, I can't have all these. Not my doctors. What you do? You can't you do? Well, don't watch Doctor Who then. Don't watch it. Right, nobody asks you to come into the to come in to come in and, and watch the show. Right. We didn't have we don't have problem with new fans coming in. We never have. But I mean, if the show irritates you that much and you want to change everything about it, well then go somewhere else. Go somewhere else because we've seen what happens when you try to change Doctor Who into something that it isn't. It fails. So yeah, all of these companies out there, you, they're still not listening to fans. Some are, but there's still a lot of still a lot of work to be done in the industry. You need to be listening to fans because without fans, you wouldn't have these franchises. You wouldn't be making money from them, right? Because these casual fans will dip in and out. These newfangled stands, they don't hang around. As soon as the message and the agenda is done, they move on like locusts to the next one. So wise up, cop on, and start listening to the people that made these franchises a success and, and lined user pockets as companies. And stop listening to people that don't understand the show and want to change everything that makes the franchise what it was. Simple as that, right? It's time that they, that that, uh, that these companies start listening. Enough is enough, right? End the story. Enough is enough. Done with it all now. Anyway, if any other Doctor Who news breaks, uh, if there's any media, any stuff, I will try get it. Whether it's a pre-record or go live, as I said, you know, the World Cup is on. I've been watching the matches with the missus. Actually, we've been watching all the matches, so we've been spending a lot of time together while we're watching the football. So that's what I've been doing. But if, as I said, if any breaking news happens, I will do streams in between each match because you get about an hour. Um, So that's what I'll do because, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're enjoying the football side of the World Cup, I have to say. Um, it's been interesting. Looks like Wales are out now. Um, they just got beaten by Iran 2-0. Um, got Qatar is next now against Senegal. So we want Senegal to win that one, you know. So we can't wait to watch that. But anyway, as I said, if any Doctor Who news breaks in the meantime, uh, we will uh come on. And whether it's a pre-record or, or or proper stream, will be on. Um, as I said, uh, David Tennant and Eccleston, apparently, I think it's an audio, are going to be getting together for the sixtieth. Uh, it would have been nice, and hopefully, there is still a chance that maybe we might get him in the main show, Eccleston. But I say it's a long shot. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Right, folks. I'm going to leave it there. Um, because there's nothing else really to... I've had a look. There's nothing else really uh, to talk about in connection with RTD or anything got to do with the era. So, as I said, if Arton comes out, you know, I'll talk about... Because, I, you know, there's plenty of articles on the previous era, but I refuse to even do them anymore we don't need to be living in the past so i don't care what the media are saying because they didn't criticize the show when they should have criticized the show so they're hypocrites now now that they know that the tide is torn and they're coming out against and that's what i find hypocritical 
So I'm not even going to highlight them. I'm not even going to give them the light of day. So it's the RTD stuff that I'm interested in. And of course, I had to do the William Russell uh, thing because that is that is absolutely wonderful that he got that world record. And and well deserved, well deserved. I'd love to see. Um, I'd love to see. I would love to see. Uh, what you call it? Uh, Fazer Hines torn up in Doctor Who. We'd love to see Jamie again. I think that would be. Uh, that'd be great. It's a pity that Chibs didn't walk that into the power of the Doctor. He probably could have walked it in somehow. Uh, but it wouldn't have made sense without Trouton, I suppose. Um, but that would have been nice. That would have been a nice little touch there. Um, but yeah. Anyway, we can dream as Doctor Who fans, can't we? Anyway, we'll leave it there, folks. Have a good one. Enjoy the rest of your day, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world. And uh, we will talk to you uh, very soon. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and all of that. And we'll see you soon. Have a good one, folks. Goodbye.